Hey everybody, it's Carmilla here. My apologies for having to shift our time earlier. Um, but your girl's been working today. I've been <laughs> I've been in it today, working on some numbers, doing my quarterly review, doing what I'm coming on here to talk to y'all about. So um I'm looking forward to um hearing from you and I hope that I can help some of you um get prepared for the remainder of the year right we don't want to wait you know we don't want to wait until um the middle of the year and we don't want to wait until third quarter and then we're struggling trying to figure out um how we're going to meet these numbers you got to know what your numbers are now like you actually you should have knew last year but it's okay if, if you didn't know last year that's fine that's why i'm here to help you now so we can get these numbers together um, so let's get these numbers together. Hey, Kimberly, thank you for jumping on. Let's get these numbers together. Have y'all do y'all have y'all decided what you want to um, make for 2022? Your revenue goal, your gross revenue goal, and that ro gross revenue goal, you take that and you simply just divide it by four, and that's your quarterly goal. Hey there, you take that um, annual goal divided by 12. That's your monthly goal. And so you have all of those things in. You know, sometimes we think, why do I need to know monthly and quarterly? Because what if one month is low? It, it ain't a big deal if that one month is low. When you're looking at your numbers by the by the quarter and each month, you're looking at it. You can see if I, if I did good in January, but it dropped in February, you're looking at those numbers to see what you need to do extra in March to make up for it, to get your business back on track. Now, listen, y'all, I'm sorry. I just came in running wide open. I ain't introduced myself or anything because we do have some new people in here. I've been doing coaching all evening. So like I'm in, I'm in like work mode. Like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> so let me slow down. My name's Carmela Williams <laughs> and I'm your favorite business coach. I work with um, entrepreneurs to just help make sure that one, you're making money in your business. That is one of my primary things. Uh, it's real important to me for my clients to be successful. I, I, I'm not doing my job if my clients are not making money. So that's my thing right there. Hey, Cambrell. Hey, Don. Hey, Tina. There y'all go. Come on in here. I hope y'all got y'all notebooks. I got my notebook. I hope you're ready. We got some notes. I got some tips I'm going to be um, giving. I'm going to be giving to you. <laughs> hey there. Thank you for popping in, Dieta. I'm going to be giving you some tips because listen, Y'all, if we don't get this part right, we will always be spinning our wheels. And what I don't want you to do in this group is I don't want you to have a business, be busy, but be broke. You got to be able to do the hard work of breaking down these numbers. And the cool thing is, if you put some type of system in place, it can help you. Your system could be QuickBooks. Your simple system can be a spreadsheet you know, and, and put some formulas in that spreadsheet. And so every month you plug in them numbers and it automatically calculate it for you. That's fine. That's right. Um, Miss Sunshine Trust. So you got to look at the, um, you got to look at your numbers. And so that's what I'm doing. Like I, I was telling my husband, I'm like, I got to go and check my numbers and see where I am before I can get on here and tell y'all where you need to be. Cause I want to make sure that I'm also, I'm not teaching you strategy. I want to teach you things that work. Now I talked to y'all about QuickBooks and, you know, I, I need I need to be on their payroll because QuickBooks is the way to go as a solopreneur, I'm telling you. But if you're not ready for QuickBooks, spreadsheet is what I use for several, several years and it worked great with my tax preparer. So here we go. Let's look at those numbers. So let me back up. Your one-year revenue goal, how much money do you want to make in your business in one year? You take that and then you need to do, you need three numbers. Your annual revenue goal, uh, let me find, let me, I'm going to close this out. Let me close this out and I'm going to pull up my spreadsheet because I'm a numbers girl. And since we're doing quarterly review, we talking about numbers. My profits expenses, my bottom line. Exactly, Tina. Exactly. So let's just say, you know, I like to help my clients get to a hundred thousand, but I'm going to do 50,000 on here. Okay. We're going to do 50. If you, if you're trying to get to a hundred thousand though, um, I'm your girl. Let me help you out. So if 50,000 is your goal then 50,000 is what you want to make for the year. That puts you at 4,166 per month. And then let's take 50,000 and divide it by three. I mean, divide it by four, excuse me. So you want to make 12,500 per quarter. 
I'm just playing with numbers. I'm just playing with numbers. You need three numbers. So if you decide that you want to make, um, for, for you, it, it could be, let me do this this way. Maybe your business is not doing that much. And so you're just getting started. And so maybe you want to just make 25,000 and that's fine too. I'm just throwing some numbers out there. If you want to make 25,000, then your goal is $2,083 a month. I know a lot of people that I work with start out in business. Their first goal is usually around $2,000 a month. So if you want to make $2,000 a month, then you're, you're shooting for that 25,000 mark that puts you at though, um, $6,250 a quarter. So if one month you don't hit the 2000, one month you hit the 2000, that next month you got to exceed the 2000 to kind of just get yourself back on track. Um, sometimes you may be off in the first quarter, but then you look at the second quarter and see what can I do to make up the difference. And for those of you like Tina who have products and services, this is the perfect time to get out and do vending events and things like that because you're going to increase your revenue by putting your product in front of a new set of eyes, in front of new people, right? But you got to do the hard work now. You got to do the work of following up and all of that. So let's start with some questions here. That's the first thing you got to do. Get your three numbers. Get your three numbers. Your annual goal your monthly goal, and your quarterly goal. Those are the three numbers that you keep in mind at all times. You want to make sure you're hitting those numbers. All right. Look at January, February, and March. What was something that you would celebrate? We call those wins. What are your wins? What are your praise reports for the first quarter? What did your business do well? That's the first question you got to ask yourself. And I want you to write it down too, like write out your answers. What did my business do well? I want you to think about it even with the customers. What did my business do well? Okay, I got, I got, um, I made, you know, I, I made $5,000 first quarter. That's worth celebrating. That's a win, right? It don't matter what you made. We celebrate what we did. Hear me? We don't focus on what we didn't do. We celebrate what we did do. I'm going to show you how to tweak what you didn't hit. Don't worry about that goal. So you write out what you did make and what you did well. Um, I see Cambrell's on here. You can write out Cambrell how, the number of events that you did the first quarter. If you did 10 events the first quarter, you know, I made you know, $15,000. I did 10 events the first quarter. And out of those 10 events, five of them were new customers. You know, all of those wins, right? Uh, another win might be I was in uh, uh, a city that I had never, my first time doing an event in this city, that city. Out of the 10 events that I did, um, eight of them were in new cities. You know, all of that stuff is wins. And so you got to dig down into the detail of it, right? Get into the details of what it was that you did in your business first quarter. How many new customers did you get? Where did those customers come from? So write out all the wins, question number one. Number two, why did they become, why were they wins? Why were they wins? What was different? Perfect, Latresha. So that's congratulations. Y'all tell her congratulations. Congratulations for that win, um, Golden Sunshine. Her win was three weeks in first quarter. She was fully booked. That's worth celebrating. That's amazing. And then the other question to ask yourself, Latressa, is what did I do different to get fully booked those three weeks? Because that is something you want to implement into second quarter. And so because you were booked for three weeks in first quarter, how many weeks do you want to be fully booked in second quarter? Do you want to double it? Do I want to hit six weeks in um, my next quarter fully booked? So you got to look at what did I do different? How did I get fully booked? So you're going to set a goal of how many weeks you want to be fully booked in the next quarter and you want to put in under it those objectives of what you did that made it successful in first quarter how can you how can you um reproduce that for the second quarter that's how you do that all right let's see i got another one i see another praise report i've been in my <laughs> oh my goodness Tina's in my inner circle network. She's in my 12 month program, $700 in the weekend and 48 hours. Yes, honey. Congratulations. 
That's amazing. Congratulations, Tina. Congratulations. Listen, that's it. That's it. You, you get out there and you try new things. That's right, Kimberly. You, you find steps. So you look, Kimberly, at what did you do successfully the first quarter? So, you know, for somebody, it may be, you know, I made a thousand dollars. I made $300 a month. That's fine because we're not comparing to anybody else's business, right? But you look to see what you did do and you celebrate that. See what you did do. So if you're se uh, 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 if you're selling ink pens and you sold $300 worth of ink pens in January, $300 worth of ink pens in February, $300 worth of ink pens in March. Now for second quarter, our goal is no longer $300. You need to be trying to sell 350 or 400. There has to be some type of increase, right? Make it a reasonable increase of what you want to sell uh, April, May, and June. So if you sold 300 a month, the first three months of the year, now you want to go up to 400 a month, the next three months, put that as your goal. Then I look back and say, now, how did I sell $300 a month? Well, I sold $300 a month. Maybe I went live um, once a week. I posted pictures once a week, and then I started playing with some reels. Now, what am I going to do different the second quarter to increase it by an additional $100, right? And so maybe instead of going live once a week, maybe I go live twice a week, or maybe I continue to go live once a week. Maybe I continue to post pictures of my ink pens, but maybe second quarter, I'm going to try to do one vending event per month, or I'm going to have one party per month where I have somebody else come in and share my ink pens. All I did was I added an additional marketing strategy to what I know works so that I can increase my sales. The quarterly review, you really should do this once a month, but I know as solopreneurs, y'all, we be busy. We be trying to keep up. We trying to do, we trying to do websites. We trying to post. We trying to get shipping out quickly to our customers. We trying to respond to everybody and it can be a lot. And so sometimes you may not be able to sit down until about once a quarter and really take a real good look at your books, and, but you got to do it. You got to do it so that you know where your numbers are. Listen, we're talking about how much money you brought in, but I also want you to look at your expenses. How much money are you spending? I met with a, a young lady today who was um, talking about, you know, an expense that she had, but she's not getting results. You got to be able to look at the numbers. If you're paying somebody for a service, you need to see the numbers, right? If you're paying for my program, if my program costs my 12 month program, for instance, it costs 250 a month. You should be making triple that every month, quadruple that every month. We're trying to, I'm trying to get my people to six figures. So, you know, a uh, 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 hundred thousand dollars is not as much as you might think. It's like $241 a day. It ain't as much money as you would think, right? Let me, let me, let me give you an example. If you are, if I'm working with a coach who's working in corporate America, you can get a $10,000 contract, one $10,000 contract where you go into an organization two to three times a month and you hit six figures. So it just depends on what it is that you're doing and, and how we can pull them services together. So you got to look at your numbers, right? And when you're collaborating with other people, it needs to be a win-win. How, what are you going to get out of it? How are you going to get referrals for it from it? Right? So collaborations are good. And sometimes you don't really make money in, in that collaboration, but you should make money as a result of the collaboration. Right? So who did you work with in the first quarter? How many new customers did you get as a result of working with them? So if you're collaborating with them, you're not making money and you're not getting referrals, then the collaboration is not fruitful uh, for you as an entrepreneur. So it should be fruitful. It's got to be a win-win for you and for the other person. So the ideal way to collaborate, I had somebody was sharing with me, um, they're with an event planner and she's a speaker. She do emceeing and things like that. So when they do an event, they call on her to be the hostess and she's on the mic and things like that if the family don't have somebody. And so they just build that fee in. So when they go to that particular uh, client and they're doing their discovery meeting with the client to see what the client needs and they need them to run, they don't just decorate, but they actually do the entire event. And so 
so if they don't have an MC or a hostess and they need one, there's a cost for that. And so they collaborate with their friend who is an excellent spokesperson and that fee is in there. So it doesn't take anything away from the event planner the client knows that it's going to cost them an additional $150. And when they reach out to that person that they collaborate with, she knows when she shows up, she's going to get a check for $150. It's a win-win. The event planner gets the event. They take care of what they take care of. It doesn't take any money away from them. And then it gives their, um, it reduces stress for their client because they're offering a full service for them, right? So look at that number. What were your wins for the first three months? Why were they wins? Um, what are what can you do to incorporate that into the next three months? I keep saying four and three. It's three months. A quarter is three months. January, February, and March. And we're into April, May, and June is what we're doing now. Working on your goals for April, May, and June and build upon what is already working. You don't have to throw it all away and start over every quarter. You're just adding to. Remember what I did with the ink pens? I added an additional marketing plan. I added an additional way of getting the word out. I added vending events, right? Another way to see people. Um, and then look at what's working well for you. This is the last thing. It's real simple. So you're going to look at your income. You're going to look at your expenses. You're going to look at what worked well for you. You're going to look at why, and you're going to see how you and set the goals for the next quarter and incorporate those same things in it and then add something to it. Okay. That's the easy part. Then look at what's working well. This is the last thing. What's working well? If you have a very happy client, what's different with that client? What's really working with them? Because that may be a system. It may be something that you're doing with them that you need to automate or duplicate or offer to somebody else. Because I know for me, my clients all have different needs. They're in all different industries, right? And so they have different types of needs. But one thing they all have in common is they need strategies to help their businesses um, work specifically for them. And so I help with strategies. And so identifying what really works helps you to drill down to the things that you do well and helps you to be able to see why your customers like you, why your customers are keep, keep using you. Put some type of incentive in place for your customers to um, do repeat business with you. What type of incentive is there for them to keep using you? Is it free shipping? Is it if they come to you five times, they get uh, a, a bonus, you know, maybe for Latressa, like she was fully booked for three three weeks. So, um, you know, I don't know her price. I'm going to throw something out there. So if her price is $150, after they come five times, they get the wash free. And so this next time is just going to cost you, you know, $100 on that sixth time. It's going to cost you something. But I'm just letting you know that I appreciate um, the repeat service because statistically they said the only thing better than a new customer is a repeat customer. And so you want some type of incentive. Um, what is the referral system? What do you get? If you send a customer to me, you get $5 off of your next visit. So that's not going to cost you a lot of money. Um, for ink pens, if you, you refer somebody to me and, and I'm just, this is just something my, my husband and I play around with. Um, if we're selling ink pens by the dozen, so if you refer somebody to me that buys a dozen ink pens, then you get free shipping on your next order. So there's an incentive not only for you to continue to shop with me, but there's an incentive for you to send your, your friends to me to buy their pens from me too. You may not sell ink pens, but certain things I can't say on here. So whatever your product is, you put your product in here so that you can put some incentives within compliance within your organization in place for people to continue to do business with you. And if you can't give them any type of incentive for purchase, your customer service should be so phenomenal that they want to do business with you, that you remember their birthdays. See, those are little things that you can do that don't require a purchase. You remember their birthdays. And so if you remember their birthdays, maybe they get a free shipping coupon for their birthday or they get something free on their birthday. Yes, Cheryl, do what works well. And then you just add to it. Don't throw the whole thing away and start over. You got to do what works for you. I know it's crazy, y'all, especially those of us who go live on our pages and we watch other people going live. I see people going live 11 o'clock, midnight, stuff like that. But y'all, that just don't work for me. It just don't because... I work all day long and I'm doing coaching. And, and then when I'm working with corporate clients and things like that, I got my first call at 7.45 this morning. I was like, what? Who calls somebody this early? 
But you know, I realized I work from home. My offices are my office hours are a little different, but they're getting up and going to the state farm office. You know what I'm saying? So they on the way to work and they're reaching out to me for training. And so I have to shift how I did business because I'm doing business with a different group of people, right? And so I got to do what works for me. So my lives may have to be at noon. I just have to pe catch people on their lunch breaks. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to be able to catch people after they put their kids to bed at night. Because by the time you don't put your kids to bed at night, my husband looking at me with a side eye because I got to go in there and sit down and watch a karate movie with him and play on my phone with my foot on him so that he know that, you know, I'm still in this thing with you, boo, because I can be a workaholic. <laughs> So I got to do what works for me. Oh, Tina. Yes. So Tina does a handwritten card and she put a bag of fruit snacks in all of her gifts. And so I don't eat candy. So I ordered these. Um, I ordered her. Um, Tina has these all natural lip gloss and I love my lip gloss, gloss, Tina. And my grandkids were here. They were so happy when I opened them fruit snacks. They was, <laughs> they was dancing because they know grandma don't eat candy. They loved it. <laughs> they loved it. And let me tell you something about those free samples. Giving people those little free samples, it allows them to try before they buy. So even if you have a service, what type of service can you allow them to try before they buy? So all of those things matter. So that was it. It was real short, sweet, and to the point. You got to get in there and get them numbers. Look at those numbers. Don't be scared of those numbers. Make sure those bills are paid. Keep those receipts. Um, do those um, those fuel receipts. Uh, one of my clients has a trucking company, and we was, y'all, gas, $5 a gallon for just regular gas. Do you know what a truck driver is having to go through with the cost of their fuel, and they're doing over-the-road driving? It is crazy. What were your wins for January, February, and March? What did you do well? Uh, why was it a win? Why did it work so well for you? How much money did you make in January, February, and March? Take that and set your goals for April, May, and June. The things that went well, you better have them listed for the next quarter because you want to do those again. Why did they do well? Because I was live or I did this or I went to an event or I collaborated. Put that stuff under there again. Those are objectives. And then what else can you add to it to help it to continue to expand? It's not hard. You just got to pause. And let me tell you, you don't have to have a spreadsheet or not. Take a, take a tablet and put it in there. Excuse me. And write out your numbers so that you can be accountable to you. Do it. Don't cheat on your business. Don't cheat on your business. If you pay yourself, that's fine. That's an expense though. And so you need to know that. You need to know how much money you need. Let me give you this. this I was getting ready to jump off, but let me give you this. If you say I need to make $2,000 a month because that's what I need to make, then you got to make two, more than $2,000 a month. Why? Because $2,000 a month, if that's what you're going to pay yourself, then, but you still also got to make sure that you can pay your business expenses. You still got to buy supplies for your business. You got overhead. You got internet. You got a phone. You got a computer. What happened if your phone died? I run the world for my phone. My phone start acting crazy. I'm going to be lost, right? And so you got to have money in your business account so that, so let me give you this. If you are going, living from paycheck to paycheck, you don't want your business running from paycheck to paycheck or client to client. Because if you're running your business from client to client, now you're operating from a place of lack. And you attract what you well, who you are. Don't you ever put together a program because you're desperate for money? Don't you ever reduce your prices because you just need to hit a financial goal or you got a bill to pay? No, no, no. You got to trust God when it comes to your your business and trust God when it comes to your prices because you attract who you are. And so if you build it from a place of lack, you will always attract people to you that want what it is that you have, but they can't afford it. So you need not only customers who want what it is that you have, but you want customers that are ready to pay for it. They're ready to invest in you because they value the product and service that you bring to the table. I like to do business with people that I don't have to micromanage. If I hire you to do my event, don't be coming to ask me, where do I hang the balloon and where do I put the table? No, I hired you for that. I I just did the colors and the theme. Make it pretty. Make it do what it do. Let me pay you. I don't have time for that, right? And so you are the expert in your area. 
You are the expert in your area. If your customer tells you, I want, because I need something like, if your customer say, listen, I need a springtime wreath. You should have a set of questions you ask them. Is there any particular colors that, that you want? Uh, do you want it round? Do you want your name on it? Do whatever. You got a couple of things that you ask them and they tell you that. Or do you have an example? Uh, and if they say, no, I don't have an example, but I want it to be yellow. And I like daisies and I want my name on it, Williams. Then you should be able to come up with something and present me with a couple of options because you are the expert in that area. And that's when you can show up as the expert in your business, then you can speak confidently about your prices, right? You're not running around checking somebody else's page to see what they did so you can copy it. No, I get my ideas from God or my inspiration from whatever my customers send me. And then I'm going to make sure that you, that I go above and beyond. If I charge you $500 for it, you're going to get a thousand dollars worth. It's just, I'm just going to do, I'm going to under promise and over deliver. OK, and so as long as you under promise and you over deliver and under promise and over deliver, it could simply be I sold you a dozen ink pens. And when you got these pens, they were wrapped nicely. There was a handwritten card in it. And then I also gave you a little cute custom tablet because you got to have something to write on when you got ink pens. That's under promising and over delivering. It don't mean you giving away stuff for free It's your promo items. You heard Tina call them samples, but those are promo items, right? And so you can give away little things that don't cost you a lot to let your customers know that you appreciate them because you want them to come back. Do the hard work. Look at your numbers. If you don't like what you saw the first quarter, take it up another notch in second quarter. Okay. If you don't like, if you love what you see the first quarter, you still need to take it up another notch and maintain and add something to it. Les Brown says, it's not that we aim too high and miss is that we set goals too low and we hit them and we settle there. Not in this group. So if you made $500 a month, you should be going for $650, $750 uh, uh, these next, this next quarter every month. Stretch yourself to require you to show up different. Listen, if you're trying to, if you're trying to add, I'm going to say this and I'm done. I got to get off here. If you add a hundred, if you want to make an extra hundred dollars a month, right? And I say, add a zero to it. Now you got to make an extra thousand dollars a month. The way I show up for my business every day to make a hundred dollars is not the same way I show up every day to make a thousand dollars. It requires two, it requires something different. You see the difference? So you got to stretch yourself so that you can show up differently show up as the authentic you show up having fun and i keep saying i'm getting off here and if y'all ain't doing reels yet to increase your followers on your business page what are you waiting on add that that's a way to get hey miranda that's a way to get new eyes on your products and services Facebook is pushing out reels on business pages to people that don't even like our page. Why? Because it's just what they're promoting right now. Let people see you. Let them see you behind the scenes. Let them see you open in a box. When you wake up in the morning and you walking around the track, just take a 15 second video of you walking around the track and say, I'm getting active starting my day. You know, if you're doing your devotional in the morning, do a 10 second video of you with your devotional out. Let people see, you know, I'm prepared preparing to start my day so that I can serve you good. I did a video of me dancing uh, and I put it on um, for me going from a 3X to a, a 1X, a size 14 pants. I put it on my coaching Instagram reel. Y'all, that reel got 14,000 views. I was like, oh, y'all want to be a part of my weight loss journey? Okay, I got you. I got plenty of videos. All I got to do is I'm going to use the same ones I've been using on TikTok and everywhere else. I'll be strategically at least once a week putting something over there about my weight loss journey on my coaching page because people follow you because they know, like, and trust you. They may come over there because of the weight loss journey and then realize, oh, she's a coach. Oh, wait a minute. She can help me with my business. Oh, wait a minute. She speak. Oh, goodness. I ain't know all that. But they just came over there to get a recipe. Let people in a little bit to see who you are. They love my grandkids too. And I know that. So I'm very strategic with what I post about me. You got to put those reels out there. And now your reels can be about just your product and, and you ask for the sale, but they also should be educational. I did a reel today. I did a 30, a, a, it was less than 60 second video on what I'm teaching y'all tonight for 30 minutes. 
you know, have you did your itemized list? And if y'all ain't did an itemized list, that's why you're struggling with this quarterly, right? For me, my itemized list, I did mine. Let me tell you what mine says. I have a line item that says coaching program bronze. My price, the number of people that I want in that program for the year is only 12. Coaching program gold, the number of people that I want in that program. Um, quarter two workshops, quarter three workshops. I have a specific purpose for my workshops. My corporate trainings, I only want four corporate clients and I have the amount of money that I want down for those corporate clients. My DISC training, there's a set fee for that and the number of people that I want to go through that program for the year. Keynote speaker, the number of keynotes that I want to do this year and you'll be surprised that it's not a lot. It don't take a lot when you're very strategic. I have a lot of people in my coaching programs, but not in my corporate programs because they require a lot more of my time, my preparation, my energy. They're for bigger groups. And because it's corporate, they pay totally different. The pricing is different. And then social media management. I met with a young lady today that I'm, I, I have two new social media clients that we are getting ready to launch by May 1st, where we manage their uh, social media pages for them, make sure they got content, make sure that things are posted on there on a regular basis, make sure that we're responding um, to their clients. I don't have a lot of time for the social media management, but I like doing it. So I have a small number on there um, of the social media clients. And then anybody that I get above that, I'm going to be giving them to my team. My team will be um, doing that. That puts us where we need to be um, in our business. So I got an itemized list. So when I look at my quarterly goals, I can look back because I told y'all I wanted 12 coaching clients. I got six. So I, I, we only in April. I got the rest of the year. I need six more. So I hope to get my other six in this second quarter. You see how I use that as a goal and uh, my workshops, my workshops are free. But my workshops are what I use to let my clients try before they buy, to see if they want to keep working with me. Same reason we do this group here. I don't mind sharing with you free because I only, only got room for 12 coaching clients. It's over 300 in this group. I can't work with all of you one-on-one -on -one in anyway, right? And so of the 300, I only need 12 that's ready to make a commitment. So I'm giving, I'm allowing you to try before you buy. This is your sample, right? So that you can work and use what I teach you. Take it and use it, implement it so you can make money in your business. But I have my itemized spreadsheet here and every quarter, every month, I can see where my numbers are and see where I'm strong at and see what I need to build in. I need to build my corporate contracts. And so that's why I joined the BNI chapter. And so I, I'm around business owners every Wednesday. It's a referral program. And so I refer them business, they refer me business. That's what we do. Why am I there? Because that's what I need. And so second quarter, that's my focus is to build my corporate. So I need four corporate contracts. If I can get two of them in second quarter, oh, that changes the game. And if I get four before the end of the year, hubby already know by 2023, he'll be putting in his resignation because we're going to be on the road. We got work to do. <laughs> so I hope I'm giving you enough examples from the beginning to now to show you how to use these quarter, your quarterly review within your own internal business to see what's working, to see why it's working, to add to it. And listen, if you're not hitting your goals, I don't spend a lot of time on this, but it's important. If you didn't hit your financial goals, ask yourself why, what happened? What can you do more of? Um, at one point, I was doing really good in business, in my product-based business, but my sales dropped. And I had to look take a hard look at myself. You know why my sales drop? Because I suck in shipping. Well, I did at that time. I would, I would forget to mail people stuff and people not finna be buying from you and you ain't mail their stuff. They don't pay for shipping and stuff like that. And so that's when I realized, okay, I got to get an assistant. And so at that point I hired an assistant. And then, so my assistant made sure that those items were pulled for me and she packaged them for me. And then all I had to do was just, um, put the labels on and my husband, he would come in. He's all right. You need me to make post office runs. And he made post office runs. What did I have to do? I have to put a system in place to make sure I don't forget to mail people stuff. <laughs> because when you're running multiple businesses, 
you can forget stuff. Let's just be honest. Because at that point, you realize when you start forgetting stuff, you're doing too much. You need to pause. You need to put a system in place so that you don't lose momentum where you've built. And then you can add on. Okay? You can add on. Okay, Angela. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for that. Send it to me. Um, that's our thing right now. I'm focusing on that second quarter. If y'all know somebody needs some leadership training and development, I'm your girl. And we don't we can do it in person or we can do it via um Zoom. But we ready to roll. The Lord is opening doors and I am excited. And as he blesses me, he blesses you. Because everything attached to me wins. And that's not arrogance, y'all. That's just because of God and because of his favor. And anything that I learn, I'm coming in here to share with y'all. Because I want you to go and do it. Now, if you need me to walk you through it, then we got to work together one-on-one. -on -one. But if I can share it to you, share it with you, and you're going to go do the research and get it done, go on and get it done. I want you to win. I want you to be successful. I want you to be like, y'all better get in Camilla Group because she over there giving away all that stuff free. Y'all better get in there and get that information and go and make that money. That's what I want y'all to do. Y'all have a good day. Get those quarterly reviews done. If you got questions, drop them in the comments, message me, and I'll, I'll respond back to you because I do want you to be successful. Y'all have a great day. All right, Kimberly. Message me, Kimberly. Y'all have a great day.